Hey everybody, it's Charlie. We have huge news. Marvel confirmed that they're developing an Avengers 4 spinoff for the Winter Soldier character. And they announced some more details about the other Avengers characters that are getting spinoffs. So we gotta break it down. There were also a bunch of you requesting I do a giveaway for Red Dead Redemption. So we'll make the giveaway for that. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a Marvel related comment on the video. So I know you all want to know about the story. When is it going to drop? Which characters is it going to involve? Who are the villains going to be? So important details, just like the Loki series, the Scarlet Witch series, this will be Sebastian Stan's character after the events of Avengers 4 and Anthony Mackie's Falcon character will co-star. So it'll be the two of them, but obviously Winter Soldier gets top billing. You can understand why they would probably choose to put those two characters together, just because they serve as a great action duo and a great comedic duo at the same time. They just have great joke chemistry. I'm really sorry. What? You couldn't have done that earlier. I hate you. We'll call that soft confirmation that Rocket never gets that arm. They did confirm it's going to be six to eight episodes. I think they just haven't quite decided exactly how the story is going to play out. So they don't know how long the episodes are going to be. If it'll be like normal 42 minute episodes or if it'll be a full 60 minutes or it'll be like the last couple of seasons of Game of Thrones and their feature length episodes. All that means is, is that they're longer than 60 minutes. So just expect them to be bigger episodes because they're going to be on the streaming service. There'll be no ad breaks in the middle of it. I know there's a lot of questions about pricing and just physically how you're going to be able to watch the episodes. So I'll address that at the end of the video. The other really big news that was buried in this Winter Soldier announcement was that they confirmed Paul Bettany's Vision character will be a really big part of Scarlet Witch's spinoff, which I think we all were kind of hoping, but it's always hard to tell because there's so much special effects involved in just bringing his character to screen, even if he's not flying around or phasing through objects all the time or using his crazy powers. I don't trade lies, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> I told you to go. We need to destroy the you in Buffalo. <laughs> How long do I stand here overacting for? But the good thing about this is that when they first started announcing these series, like the Loki series, they said that they were planning on spending Game of Thrones level money on all these, which is why they're only doing six to eight episodes. Disney has almost infinite amounts of money. It makes sense that if they were going with their A-list characters and actors, they would want to spend that A-list level of money. And because they're only doing a small number of episodes, they can shoot those, do all the special effects, and then release the episodes later in the year. It's not like network TV where they're finishing an episode once every eight days, so you can do a little bit of special effects, but every once in a while it winds up looking like PS2 graphics, you'll be able to watch an episode with like Winter Soldier or Vision flying around and it will look very similar if not exactly the same as it would be if you were seeing them flying around in a movie. One of the good things about Marvel Studios is, is they pioneer a lot of special effects for their big movies like the big Titan battle. If you haven't seen any of the behind the scenes for that, they started planning that day one. It was literally the first shot that they did and they released that teaser with Robert Downey Jr., Chris Pratt, and Tom Holland on set saying, hello, welcome to Avengers. We just started shooting. That's how long it took them to finish the special effects for that. But within the next four to five years or so, it'll be a lot easier to do stuff like that on a TV level budget. Here's a couple big details though when you read between the lines. Winter Soldier will probably never get a spin-off movie of his own because Kevin Feige said the whole reason for doing these spin-off series were for characters that weren't going to get their own solo movies during Phase 4 or Phase 5. So no Winter Soldier solo movie, no Anthony Mackie Falcon solo movie, and neither one of them is probably going to be taking the mantle of Captain America because that's like a really big movie moment. You don't do that on a TV series. But it's not really a big surprise that they're not just immediately passing the mantle of Captain America regardless of what happens to Chris Evans. Like even if he retires, they could still pass the mantle to another character. There have been so many people to be Captain America in the comics that there are a number of other choices. You can kind of see their thought process too. They're like, okay, we're just gonna put his shield over on the shelf and wait till Chris Evans wants to come back in cameo in a far distant Avengers movie and then we can always pass the mantle. There's no rush to have another Captain America running around on screen if it's not going to be Chris Evans because you have all these new characters to introduce and if you're going to have somebody that's called Captain on the Avengers, Carol Danvers is coming in so she'll be the new Cap quote unquote even though I really hope that they don't call her that. I'm sure Falcon or Spider-Man or one of the other characters will coin some nickname for her, but for now I'm just thinking of her as Carol Danvers. 
They haven't said a whole lot about what the plot is going to be, other than obviously it's picking up in the wake of Avengers 4. So for the most part, I'm just assuming they're picking up where Captain America's Secret Avengers left off between the events of Civil War and Avengers Infinity War. They released a prequel comic book that told some of that story. It was the Avengers version of the Spider-Man Homecoming plot where Vulture and the Tinker were creating a black market for alien weapons and tech. Remember how Iron Man said that that was below the Avengers pay grade when Spider-Man told him about it? You can see that he wanted Spider-Man to shut up and just chill out for a minute. But also the Russos confirmed some details about what was happening with Iron Man and Captain America after the events of Civil War. So part of the reason why Iron Man says below Avengers pay grade is because he knew about Cap's secret Avengers running around the globe tearing down alien arms trade. There was actually a moment during Infinity War where you see the Cap flip phone. There's an outgoing call on there too, implying that Iron Man at some point at least tried to call Captain America, even though they imply that they haven't spoken since Civil War. If they can get the actor to come back, easy slam dunk villain for that Winter Soldier series would be Baron Zemo setting up a Masters of Evil within the Marvel Cinematic Universe that they can sort of spill over into the other spin-off series and maybe kick it into the movies if it becomes a big enough thing. But as for Vision Scarlet Witch TV series, just because it's them together, it implies they'll be spending time dealing with their really complicated relationship from the comics, delving more into the nature of their powers. And because it's Scarlet Witch, I'm really hoping that the villain winds up being a magic based villain with loose ties to the Doctor Strange canon so that they can spend some time developing her chaos magic from the comics. You've all been asking about tying Scarlet Witch of the MCU to whatever MCU Magneto is going to be like when he resurfaces. They can actually start setting that story up during the Scarlet Witch solo series. Like she learns the secret of her true biological father. That person just happens to be Magneto and they can deal with it in a future X-Men movie. Because regardless of what they do with Scarlet Witch in the MCU, Elizabeth Olsen is a very young person. She can keep playing that character for a long time. So she might not be in every single movie, but they can always bring her back for a really big X-Men movie or a really big Avengers movie. They'll probably announce a couple more of these big spin-off series. They haven't said which other characters are going to get them. They haven't said anything more about a potential Hawkeye series. But right now I'm assuming that they'll go into production and they'll drop them in the order that they announce them. So that would mean that the Loki TV series would be first, then they do the Scarlet Witch Vision series, then they would do the Winter Soldier Falcon series. Loki is the only one that I'm expecting to be set during the past just because they killed him during Infinity War. So unless they're trying to totally mislead us and he does come back for real during Avengers 4, it'll have to be set during the past. Right now, it sounds like they plan on releasing these during different times of the year staggered so that they have a steady stream of new content coming to the service. So maybe Loki sometime spring 2020, then during the summer, they'll have that Scarlet Witch Vision series. Then a little bit later in the year, Falcon Winter Soldier. And then if you guys didn't remember, the Star Wars Mandalorian series is going to premiere at the end of next year during the winter. So winter 2019, that Avengers 4 trailer is coming later in November. So hopefully they'll announce some more details about this other content around the same time. Click here for my video on that leaked trailer and click here for my Spider-Man Far From Home black costume video. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.